Mm -hmm. oh, you got four, Richard? No, I don't have one. You don't have one? Oh, yeah, we got one at home. Well, you got one I got, uh, I, Kim made, made a psalm and gave one to me. Uh, it's kind of hard to, I'm trying to figure out the best way to do what I'm doing because Don was telling me there's a lot of people, a lot of people, they, uh, he said he gets a lot of people feedback from YouTube for the Sunday school and the preaching and everything like that. And uh, let them let them know that uh, let them know that uh, what what we believe and why we believe it. You know, you got one, Andy Dwight. Oh, uh, you got one. Well, that's what, and I, I was trying to trying to figure out the best way to do it. You uh, know. I started copying down everything, everything from up to where I got my old hands is about copied out. But what it is, it's it tells us what we believe and why we believe it according to from the from the scriptures. It's not just it's man, not man made or anything like that. Uh, you can take it, you can take your uh, uh, copy, and you can. Uh, uh, Follow along, and some of the things, some of the the, uh, the titles, I may give you all all the references, and I may not give you I may not give you all of them. Some of them I'll be looking in the Bible because it's going to be a lot of long uh, uh, verses, and uh, once we get down through that, I I, I know I know it, I don't want to say this in a bad way. It get it'll get boring to you. Uh, the last time we went over this thing was back before we got a new pastor, been about six years ago, and uh, I wasn't doing it. And it, did they just we just read the titles and the the subject matter? And uh, but anyway, I, I don't. I'm not going to keep you uh, uh, long. Uh, I, I told Brother Luke, and I appreciate him. Seeing what I had to say and getting over with, you know what I mean. And and just just because you uh, don't preach, but I don't mean that you're not a good preacher. A good preacher knows says what he got to say in an hour. He can say it in an hour and be out of here. Because I've been standing in the pulpit, I've stood here, and I've seen people. Once you go get you get past that hour time, like like in the middle of the, I mean, at uh, noon, when you start going out over that twelve o'clock, you'll start seeing people shift weight. Shift weight. <laughs> like I had an evangelist here preached from the, for you know, from Saluda, North Carolina, preached up in the old church that he drove every night, day down here, every evening down here. He didn't want to stay at the church, said he wouldn't stay at the church. He said, I'm going to drive from Saluda down here every day. It's 100 miles, maybe a little over 100 miles one way. He said, that way, when I preach, ain't nobody say the preacher told me what to preach. He drove it every day by himself, and uh, he, he, when he'd come in, he'd come in about ten minutes before the service. And when the service was over, and the people got he didn't take nobody off and, unless he was dealing with them about they had a problem or something. He didn't take the preacher off. He'd get in his vehicles, his Cadillac, and go back to Saluda, North Carolina. And uh, but uh, anyway, if you would, let's I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of bear with me. Maybe I can get through the biggest part of what all the scriptures are, and. Uh, to one more night after the night. If you would turn your well, those you want we want a copy, Brother Brian? I'll come, I'll get you one. I've got two extra and anybody would need extra one there, I got two of them here. Thank you, brother. Okay. You don't want my phone? You got one. I ain't now. I don't wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I better have one out now. I better have one for my wife, I better make one. There you go. I believe I'm gonna be probably somewhere right around eight right there, I think. If we're to, uh, I'm gonna be in uh, section eight, I'll be in article two, I believe it is. Article two. Yeah, so you got uh, one is the Holy Scriptures, two the Godhead. I went over that. The person and work of Christ went over that last time. The person and work of the Holy Spirit, 
went that the total depravity of man we believe I have went over that since salvation then eternal security and assurance of believers which I dwelt on that there's a lot of scripture on that that there's a lot of folks I'm sure I believe I'm, I'm, I'm almost sure that there's folks that are saved that don't have assurance of it I was talking to Brother Lucan about that last uh, uh, Sunday at the, at the dinner table I believe it was the dinner table I believe there's folks that they 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 are saved, but they don't have assurance of it. And over in Second Tim, uh, Second Peter, chapter one, down about verse nine, and it, before it gets down, it tells you about all these things that if you got these dwelling with you, knowledge, virtue, and all these things dwelling, they're active in your life. That uh, you won't be neither barren or you won't fail or fall. But if they're not, it says that you'll be forgot that you was ever saved. See, and I've dealt with people that uh, they said they wanted to get saved. They wasn't saved. And I'd go talk to them, and, and I'd, I'd go down the Romans Road. They said, well, I've already done that. I said, do you have? I said, yes, yeah, I've already done that. I said, what makes you think you're not saved? He said, well, this one person, I've told this a lot of times. That happened right up here. A young guy, about 20 years old, he told me, he said, uh, he was down, went down by himself and gave an invitation. I don't know it was a revival or something. And uh, I went back. I went down, and I put my hand on his shoulder. He kneeled down, and I asked him, I said, uh, is uh, can I pray with you? And he said, Yeah. I said, What's your problem? You got a special problem? He said, I'm not saved. And I said, You're not. I said, Would you like to be saved? He said, Yeah, I would. I took him back in the Sunday school room back then. Went down the Romans Road. He said, Well, I've done all that. I said, But do you did you do you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins on the cross for your personal sins? See, I was taught when I went to church when I was a little boy that I was going to heaven because Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And the sins of the world, and we wouldn't have to go to hell. And because Jesus died on the cross, that meant that I wasn't going to go to hell. But I didn't have no, I didn't, I didn't have no peace about that. I still in, got married and had to start and raise a family, and I still didn't have no peace about my good works. All my good works, if they outweighed the bad, if just exactly what it was, if your good works outweighed your bad, you're going into heaven. And but I didn't have no peace about that. Then finally, whenever I got heard the gospel and God presented it being about being born again that personally I have to, I had to receive Jesus Christ personally not as a group I had for myself he died for me he died for you he died for Martha he died for Millie he died for David Don Richard Tommy all of them. he died for each individual and he did, and, I, and he died for my sins and when I got that that evangelist he whenever he got through with me and this other guy that went down the other guy was, he's a lot, about twice as old as I was, or maybe more. And then a little, bit, a little block church out past my house there. And when he got through, he told us, he said, look to me, and he said, brother, said, uh, suppose you go home, and he says, you, this was in November, he said, you hear something under your house, water running or spewing at 2 o'clock in the morning, he says, you ain't going to feel like you're saved. He said, you don't, you don't put your faith in feelings. He said, you put your feelings on the, base of, on the basis of God's word. And that's what I've tried to do. My feelings, they change. And I believe we heard some uh, preaching, uh, I preached a message one time on happiness and joy. Happiness can change in a hurry. I expect whenever the spawns came down this past springtime, first time turned on the main water line and all that water went to go, and I don't guess you're too happy, were you, brother? <laughs> that happiness will leave in a heartbeat. Well, I just go down there and I clean up, get a little straightening up him, and I go down there and I go, go fishing. <laughs> yeah. I know, I, well, you know, we all know about that. We have to put our faith and our trust in, our, in the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, let's go to... Uh, uh, the two natures uh, that's going to be on under eight under article two. You see it? You got it? Two natures. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll read some of the scriptures and I'll try to hurry along. And, and oh man, all this here writing here, boys, about <laughs> if I can keep it all together now. All right, it says in there, uh, the two natures of the believer. We believe that every saved person possesses two natures with provision made for victory of the new nature over the old nature through the power of the indwelling Holy Spirit and that all claims to the eradication of the old nature in this life are unscriptural. I, I've told this before. A guy I hadn't been saved too long where I worked at and some of the boys there, they started calling me preacher and I was down to the 
the, the uh, tool room one day, supply room, I had a requisition for some welding rods or something I was going to get for one of the guys. And I stand at the door and there's some fellows back there in the, in the tool room and the guy at the tool room attendant said, well, right there's a good man talking about me. I said, you ain't got to lie to start with. The Bible said there's none good but one. That's God. And you get to know, and I, I done this, a black guy that over here at the, uh, at the, uh, and we used to go over here to the jockey lot on one Saturday, Saturday a month. He said, "There's a good, uh, there's a good, there's right, there's a good man right there." That's what he said over there. And he's, he, I asked him about whether he was saved. Did he know if he died, he'd go to heaven? He smelled like a rum barrel. Had on a tuxedo, looked like he'd been maybe changing the oil under the car. And uh, I said, "If you died, do you know you'd go to heaven?" He said, "I'm, I'm Deacon Ike." <laughs> I'm Deacon Ike. That's going to get him into heaven because he's a deacon. And I told him, I said, no, 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 no. You got that all wrong. You got that all wrong. And I went through a plan of salvation with him, but he had to accept Jesus Christ. And he, he knew about that, but he wouldn't ever commit that he had ever done it. And he said, I, did, I believed it. I believed that Jesus, I believed it, I believe in Jesus, is what he would say. But I said, the, the death, his burial, his resurrection, it rose for your sin because he died on that cross. He arose and it, 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 he's ascended back into heaven now, interceding for us that are saved. And I said, did you ever know, remember a time that you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? He couldn't give me no answer, answer to that. And so he finally went on off. And I told him, you think about it. You think about it. Deacon Ike had on a tuxedo now. And it was, I mean, he was in a mess. And I was taking a little break. It was cold. And I went walking off down. That's a long, long place. I was walking off down through my coat on. I got down there and turned to the right there. And there was a, how many of you know what an old salamander is? A heater? <laughs> and uh, I could hear that thing. Woo, 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 woo. I went around the corner, walked up there, and that, that guy was in there, and he had about four or five other guys in there with him. And I walked up there, and I just walked up there, and I stopped. And then he got up, and, and he, then he went to tell them guys, and he said, Now, right there's a good man. <laughs> but uh, anyway, there's only one good. But we believe that, uh, uh, that boy, well, I'm getting back to what I said, I hadn't been saved long, and one of the guys that working with me, he says, uh, uh, talked to me and it was about, uh, had, did I go to church on Sunday? Did I go to church Sunday? And I, he, I said, yeah. And uh, he talk, asked me something else. And then this other guy, he was one of these uh, guys that, he said, let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. said, have, have you sinned since you've been saved? I said, yeah, I have. He said, well, you didn't get it then. So that's what I'm talking about. That, that, that's, that's what I'm saying, people. That's what I'm saying. That. They say, well, once you get saved, you ain't going to sin no more. There's nothing, nothing in my Bible or, or, that, that, that says anything about it. I sin daily, every day. That's why I put First John 1, 9 in there. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Proverbs 28, 13. He that covereth his, covereth his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh shall have mercy. And well, I have to confess my sins. I, I don't make a habit of it. I don't practice it. Like Dr. Manley told me one time I was reading that and he said something in there about practicing and practicing. He said, hey, brother. He said, we don't have to practice. He said, we are natural sinners. We don't have to practice. And I said, well, you know, I got to think about that. I said, pretty well right. We don't have to. It just comes natural. The thing about it is, the more we know about this word and hide it in our heart, the less apt we are to sin. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, read uh, Romans chapter six, verse on the scriptures there. I think I am. Uh, Romans chapter six, verse thirteen. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Romans eight twelve thirteen. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. Verse 13, For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye live through the Spirit, to mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. First Peter chapter 1, verse 14 and 16, As obedient children, not fastening yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as ye which hath called, he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, 
Be ye holy for I am holy. That's a quote from Alvin Leviticus. All right, section 9, 9. It says, Separation. We believe that all the saved should live in such a manner as not to bring reproach upon their Savior and Lord, and that separation from all religious apostasy, apostasy all worldly and sinful pleasures, Practices and associations is commanded by God. We are to separate ourselves from those. First, Second Timothy chapter three, verse one through five. It says, "This know also." Paul is writing to Timothy, young preacher. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, that, mean, that incontinent means not able to control one's feelings, desires, lacking self-control. Lack, incontinent means lacking self-control. Despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Now that's a good one right there. I talked with a guy one time that I was working with, and he said, you, he said, what, you go to church yesterday? I said, yeah, I did. He said, what the preacher preach on? I said, I don't know. You know, sometimes you, 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 you can hear a good message, but you can't. I don't forget. I'll be remember, don't remember what it was. But if if if, you, if somebody would say this is what it was, it would come back to me. Would then, but I don't know about now. I ain't guarantee you nothing now. <laughs> but anyway, he told me. He said, "I said, did you go?" He said, "No." But he said, "I was up in the mountains." So I was up in there. I said, "You was up in the mountains?" He said, "Yes." Yeah. I said, "I was up there enjoying God's creation up there in them beautiful mountains. The, the fall leaves were starting to turn and cool." And I told him, "I said, over. I think it's over Romans chapter one where it says that we're not to worship the creature more than the Creator." I said, "What do you? How do you take that?" Well, 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 well. But anyway, having a form of godliness, but not the power thereof, from such turn away. John nine, second John nine through eleven says, Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God's speed. For he that biddeth him God's speed is partaker of his evil deeds. Now, some people say, well, y'all bring them, bring these Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons or whatever else on in. And, and, and I, know, I know somebody that used to go to this church, they invited them into the house to have a Bible, to have Bible study with them. And man, that's what they want to do. They want to get in there. And they want to they want to get get lead you down the wrong road, and it's and uh, I was coming out of uh, your artist office one day back here right about Christmas, and it was getting late in the evening, and uh, our guy come up, started coming across there, and he said, "Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute," and I wondered what he was wanting. And it was right right before Christmas. He come over to me and he got to tell me he was a homeless veteran and. All like that, and I said, "How old are you?" He said, "I'm 63, I think." He said, "I'm homeless. I'm a homeless veteran." I says, uh, "And I don't have no job." I said, "If you retired out of service, you supposed to be getting a, you should be getting a, a, a check every month." He said, "Well, I said it's supposed to get it's supposed to get started here in about two weeks. Supposed to get started, and you're 63 years old." I said, "If you ever worked anywhere, you ought to be getting Social Security." And had up there in his pocket, bought a big pack of cigarettes. I said, hey man, I said, what, what, what's, what's that in your pocket there? He said, that's my cigarettes. I said, what he's wanting me, he told me he wants some money for some food. I said, don't come here with that mess. I said, if you've got money to buy, buy cigarettes, you've got money to buy a pack of crackers and a drink. And about three or four months later, I was coming out of track supply, here come this other guy, another guy. Same thing, he wasn't the same guy, with the same mess. Down on his luck. Couldn't, didn't have no job. Couldn't find no work. I said, man, that's a lie. I said, everywhere you look, help wanted, help wanted, help wanted, help wanted. You can work if you want to. It may not be making top dollar what you want to make, but you buy you something to eat. You know, I, I'll tell you folks, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I may be, I may, I may be hard hearted. But the Bible says if a man won't work, neither should he eat. It didn't say if a man can't work, it said if a man won't work, neither should he eat. These giving away programs, man, out this Christmas time when you see all this stuff, that families helping families and all this, I wonder how many of them really need help. 
4,000 something last year. How many of them really need help? You see them there coming out with all these piercings, the pot metal in the nose and the eyes and all up here and tattoos all over them, boy. You know what's happening? We that's doing the giving is in the, like we are enablers. They ain't gonna go to work. They ain't got to work. But anyway, let me get away from that. All right, number one ten is. Let's see. Let's go to Romans. Turn in your Bibles. Romans. We've got some long passage here. I want to read them. Romans chapter twelve, beginning in verse one. And I'll be reading down through. Start with Romans twelve once. Through 12. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, this is Paul writing to Timothy, I mean, I'm writing to the church there in Rome, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think but to think soberly according as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith for as we have many members in one body and all members have not the same office so we being many are one body in Christ and every one members one of another having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us whether prophecy let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith or minister let us wait on our ministry or he that teacheth on teaching or he that exhorteth on exhortation he that giveth let him do it with simplicity he that ruleth with diligence he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness let love be without dissimulation abhor that which is evil cleave to that which is good be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love in other in honor preferring one another not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. All right, I'm going to go to read, I'm going to chapter 14 of Romans, chapter 14, verse 13. 14, verse 13. It says, Let us not therefore judge one another any more, but judge this, rather that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Uh, All right, I'll let that one go there. Right, let's go to Second Corinthians. Go to Second Corinthians, chapter six. Second Corinthians, chapter six. Second Corinthians, chapter six, verse. Begin with verse fourteen. I'm gonna read down through fourteen. I start with 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 through 7, 1. All right, 6, 14, let me go here. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Verse 7, uh, chapter 7, verse 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Having all these, what we just read, and we could go all the way back, and, and, and then it said, having these promises, God's promises. All right, let's look at missions. We believe that God is sovereign. That word sovereign is, is highest in power and rank, not controlled by others. We believe that God is sovereign in the bestowment of all his gifts and that the gifts of evangelists, pastors, teachers are sufficient for the perfecting of the saints today and that speaking in tongues and the working of sign miracles gradually ceased in the New Testament scriptures 
and the New Testament scriptures were completed and their authority became established. Over in Second uh, uh, First Tim, uh, First Corinthians chapter fourteen, Paul is is talking to the church there in Corinth. It says down about in the fourteenth uh, chapter, it gets down about the thirty. Uh, eighth or thirty ninth verse where it says he's telling the, the pastor they said do not allow these things do not allow them there's things that don't allow back in the new I mean back when there was a church in the beginning back in Acts the first part of Acts when the church began they, they were doing it that was the sign gift they didn't have the word they didn't have the, the all the word down now that now when that Paul come along God said I'm gonna use Paul he's gonna straighten this out I'm I'm I'm, I'm that you want to call it, I'm, I'm bringing it down. But he said, I'm a, I want Paul, Paul's going to straighten this out. This is what I want done. And so that's why he used Paul. That's where we get our church doctrine from, the seven churches, the church there in Rome, Corinth. You got uh, 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 Galatia, Galatia. You got uh, uh, Ephesus, you got Philippi, you got uh, Colossae, and the church there at Thessalonica. Seven churches that Paul is, is laying. The, that's where we get our that's where we get our doctrine from. We don't get church doctrine from Acts, the true church, because things God has has changed those things and, and it makes uh, we've done away with the sign gifts the speaking in tongues done away with that done away with the miracle healer now God is the healer he is the healer uh, I don't believe man had, he, back in the starting of the beginning of the church men God gave men power to John and uh, uh, other uh, prophets I mean a pastor the apostles there was times he gave up the, they could heal where the apostles the twelve and I don't know whether Judas ever done any healing or not. There's no record of that. But the others, they did, they did the healing. And uh, if you go into Mark, the last chapter, I believe it's uh, whatever the last chapter of Mark is. It might be 16, whatever it is. The last few verses of that uh, book of Mark, it, it talks about that there to, that would be the signs of an apostle doing these, doing these things. But see, then now the apostle is getting ready to, getting ready to uh, vanish off the scene. Old age, and they got so many more churches and everything that uh, God said this is going to be I want a divine order for all the churches and so that's what uh, Paul what God used Paul to do for the, get put set down to all of the, the way the churches were supposed to be and it would have been good if, if we had a stuck to that all along there wouldn't be but one church there wouldn't be but one church. You wouldn't have a you wouldn't have a, a Methodist or Episcopalian. You wouldn't have a Lutheran. You wouldn't have a uh, whatever else, you wouldn't have a church of God. You wouldn't have the church of Christ. You wouldn't have all these other all these other co collaborations. It'd be just one church. Just stick to the doctrine what Paul has given, what God has wrote, written down in His Word here. Uh, all right, First Corinthians twelve. Let me see. Let me get back to my notes. Yeah. Let me see. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 4 through 11, it says, Now therefore, now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of administration, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operation, but the same God, which worketh all in all. But the manifestation, that manifestation means the act of showing, making clear or proving, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongue, diverse means many kinds, different kinds of tongue, to another the interpretation of tongue, but all these worketh that one and the self the self same spirit dividing to every man severally as he will that word severally means individually dividing to every man individually as he will see there's, there's some of you folks may have more faith than I do some of you folks but faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word God gives us faith uh, you know 
you say, Lord, increase the, 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 the uh, disciple, the apostles told Jesus, said, Lord, increase our faith, increase our faith. Teach us how to pray as John taught his disciples how to pray. And uh, But anyway, uh, now we don't see nowhere after after the apostles, after Jesus, the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we don't see that in there, teach us how to pray. I hadn't been able to find it. Don't, but why is that? Because my because the, when there was Jesus was walking on the face of the earth, there was no faith. They mean the faith, the I mean the spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit came and indwells us now. And what who you hear people talk about a great prayer warrior? Well, the Holy Spirit says that He makes intercession for us. We don't even know how to pray as we ought to. The Holy Spirit prays through us. And see, and you can read all the books in the world on how to pray and teach me how to pray. Just pray, just talk to God like I'm talking to, to you or to your, your dad or somebody like that or your friend. Talk, just tell God. He knows, he knows your heart. He knows your heart better than we do. Anyway. Let's see. I'm about out of time here now. Anyway. I'm going to stop right there. Get all my paperwork done. Got it together. Yeah. Do we ever, I will read this right here. 2 Corinthians 12, verse, chapter 12, verse 12 said, Truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience and signs and wonders and mighty deeds. Ephesians 4, 7 through 12 said, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. You know, uh, we, we grow in grace. We don't grow into grace. We grow in grace. Uh, but to every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captive cap led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? That's when he was put into tomb. That's what he's talking about, put into the upper part. He that descended is the same also that ascended up from above all heaven that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, the church. So I'm gonna stop with that. He gave, he gave, uh, he gave the, 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 he gave apostles, he gave uh, prophets, he gave pastors, he gave teachers, evangelists for the the, the edifying of the church. That's over in uh, Ephesians chapter four. He gave that to the gift he give, give gifted me into the church for the edification of the church. And and we've always had people in this church ever since I've been here that that the needs of the things that we needed here was always supplied. When you say, Brother Richard, you've been here you've been here a long time too. We've never we we've never been we've never been without a piano player. Uh, we've never I don't know of anything that we've ever ever needed that we didn't have. That we didn't get, that wasn't, that wasn't here. God always had that here for us. And yet sometimes I wonder whether, is it because did we really appreciate it or didn't appreciate it? And we took it for granted, I think, a lot of times. You know, I think a lot of times, I'll be honest with you, a lot of times I think God, I take God's blessings to me for granted a lot of times until I sit down and take inventory. I think my old knee is gone. Doctor told me it's gone. My hip is bad shape, and sciatic nerve bad shape. My wrist, they, they shot. But I don't have to look too far before I see somebody that's in a whole lot worse shape than I am. Father, help us to be thankful people. Father, help us to love you. Help us to love the brethren. And Father, I just, I just thank you for your word. Father, all, your word is all truth. And Father, that's what we want. We need the truth. We can get these stories and these fiction and all like that, novels and everything from the, from the world. But Father, you said it'd be easier for heaven and earth to to go go away than it would be for one jot and one tittle of your word to fail. Father, we know that you're all powerful, all knowing. 
Help us to be faithful in all things. I pray you'd be with us. Keep us safe the rest of the week. I pray you'd bring us back Sunday morning. I pray, Father, you'd be a, be a wonderful thing for us. I'm concerned if you came back before Sunday, before we even got home tonight, called us out. Lord, help us to love you and be what we ought to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You dismissed. <laughs>